I would confidently be able to recommend this shoe to pretty much anyone who is looking to do their long runs or marathon distance. Good morning, welcome back to the vlog. So today is the day after the Essex cross country yesterday. Um, a good 10K effort in the mud, where I came eighth place. So yeah, if you haven't seen that vlog, go watch the previous one. Um, this morning, it is Sunday, which is my, typically the day I do my long run. I'm gonna be taking the Saucony Endorphin Pros out for Pro 2's out for a 25k long run, give them a good test. Um, this is actually the second time I've taken these shoes out for a run. I did a 10k sort of shakeout run the other day and yeah now today we're taking them on a long run and I thought I would share some of the specifications and first impressions while I'm out there on the road. Um, full disclaimer these shoes were sent to me by Saucony for the purpose of review um, but all of the views myself um, they haven't seen this video before I publish it and they have no control over the content I produce but yeah taking, I'm about 5k in to my 25k loop this morning in the lovely sunny Essex bitterly cold today though just taking my gloves off so I can hold the camera but yeah, certainly be putting the one again in a second. I think it's about two degrees. Um, but yeah, shoes are holding up well so far. Let's talk specifications. Okay, so the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2s are Saucony's marathon road racing shoe. And um, I've recently tried out the speeds and I believe they're quite similar um, in terms of design features um, that the yeah the Saucony Speed 2 has. Um, so we've got the same um, power run PB midsole. Um, one of the differences is this pro version has a full length carbon plate. Um, I believe it's sort of S-shaped. Um, whereas the Saucony Endorphin Speed had a nylon plate, so that's a slight difference. Um, we've still got that same 8mm drop from heel to toe, so I believe it's... Oh, there go my gloves. Yeah, so as I was saying before I dropped my gloves, um, yeah, 35.5mm in the heel, dropping 8mm to a 275 in the forefoot. So yeah, gets you nice onto your toes. Oh, it is bitterly cold this morning. The other features to mention is we've still got the speed roll technology. Um, and I believe the Endorphin Pro 2 has something they're calling the Form Fit technology, which basically means the upper um, and I think the, um, what's it called? The insole of the shoe basically conforms to your foot. So as I break this shoe in, you can already feel it sort of conforming to the shape of my foot, um, which gives a really, really comfortable ride. I'll share my first impressions at the end of this video um, after I've finished this long run this morning but I can already tell this is one of the most comfortable marathon racing shoes that I've tried. One thing unfortunately I am noticing is the grip issues that were with the 
sucking the endorphin speed in the wet um, are the same in the pro unfortunately the roads are a little bit damp this morning um, and I've been slipping a little bit um, through my sort of foot strike especially on these icy bits which I suppose you can't blame the shoe it's just the conditions this morning but yeah I'm going over ice now and I can't grip at all so yeah if Sokani are watching definitely something to improve on in the future is the grip because if the conditions aren't dry Sokani shoes seem to suffer a little bit So my watch just clicked 12 kilometers. Um, so I'm nearly halfway into this run this morning. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about the midsole on this shoe. So it's exactly the same power run PB uh, midsole that the Sockney Speed 2 has. But with this shoe, it has the carbon plate. They're feeling a little bit firmer underfoot than the Speeds. Um, but in return, they're definitely feeling a bit more responsive. So I'm sinking less into the midsole um, than I do in the speeds. And it seems to be giving me a little bit more responsiveness in the toe off than the speeds did. So there we go, just finished my Sunday long run, 25K exactly in one hour and 48 minutes an average of 420 per kilometer um, now for my little like warm down if you like I'm going to be doing game two of the squid games for runners um, with this messy happy in this round all I need to do is run a circle as my Strava art to progress into round three can't be that hard luckily I picked number four which yeah turned out to be circle which is the easiest shape of them all some people are having to do triangles, um, stars, umbrellas. You'll know the, the drill if you've watched the Squid Games. I'm just going to have a go and see if I can draw a perfect circle in my local park. Let's see how I get on. So this GPS is ready, so it should be ready to go. This is my starting point here on this sort of little concrete bit here. Um, so as long as I finish here, hopefully I should draw a perfect circle. Let's give it a go. Here we go. First attempt. So all I've got to do is draw a circle. Can't be that hard, can it? Here we go, first attempt in progress. And stop. Let's see if i got a circle. Grab my phone quick. So I'm just waiting for my data to upload to Strava. Let's have a look. Did I draw a perfect circle or do I need to do it again? So there we go, attempt number one is a fail. Unfortunately, the start and end point don't overlap. There's a little bit of a gap between them, um, so I'm going to have to do it again. Here goes take number two. Nice and slow. Draw a circle, and we're through to the next round. God, I didn't think it would be this difficult, but yeah. First attempt was a fail. Let's hope the second attempt is a bit more of a success. 1.9. So yeah, 200 meters. Let's keep curving round. Just stopped the watch for attempt number two. Let's go over to my phone and see if I was a bit more accurate this time. Attempt number two and it doesn't line up again. That's another fail. So I've got one last attempt. Oh, this is really down to the wire. I hope I can get through. But yeah, one last chance to draw a perfect circle. It's harder than I thought. Okay, here goes last attempt. Let's go. The moment of truth. Stop the watch. Did I draw a perfect circle on the third attempt? If I haven't, I'm out. Let's go find out. So there we go, attempt number three. We had some success. A perfect circle here in the park, which means hopefully I'm, round, I'm into round three. Good stuff. So I'm back from my run in the Sockany Endorphin Pro 2s. Really enjoyed the ride today over the 25 kilometer distance. So that was a bit more of a longer run at a steady pace for me today, um, around 4.19 per kilometer. Here it is on Strava. All my training is um, public on Strava, so you can go and have a look. So let's start off with the first impressions, putting this shoe on my feet. 
Um, I actually went half a size down in this um, pro version in the speeds. I went true to size and I noticed there was a little bit of room in the tow box. Um, so I went half size down this time and I, yeah, much, much better fit putting the shoe on the foot. We'll start with the upper. It seems to be a lot more sort of a stripped back upper that compared to the speed. Um, there's a lot less padding around this heel area. Um, the heel tab is a lot less flimsy, a lot more flimsy. Um, yeah, and we've got a single mesh um, upper here so you can, you can see it all the way through, very breathable. Um, so if you've got a hot marathon coming up, then yeah, this shoe is not gonna, you're not gonna have any problems in the heat. In terms of the midsole and the ride of this shoe, it feels very similar to the Socony Endorphin Speed 2. However, I would say it's slightly firmer. Um, this shoe has a carbon plate, so you can't really bend it um, compared to say the Speed where you can bend it a lot more. You can't really notice it until you start picking up the pace a little bit, and then it starts to feel a little bit more responsive than the Socony Endorphin Speed 2. Um, I feel like I'm just constantly comparing it to the Speed 2, but the shoes are very, very similar. Um, and so if you get on well with the Speeds, then the Pro is going to be a, yeah, definitely an option that you want to consider for that marathon and the long run sort of distance. So in terms of the ride and the overall comfort, a very smooth ride and um, the comfort is exceptional. It fits on the shoe. The shoe fits on your foot really well, a very secure lockdown. Um, it was comfortable for me straight out of the box. It didn't take any sort of breaking in. Um, and I think that is mainly due, due to this insole. I actually took it out earlier and had a look. Um, it's pretty cool the way it's been designed, slightly higher on this, um, the arch area here. So it gives you a nice bit of support. Um, and I believe this is part of um, Socony's technology they call Form Fit, where basically the shoe, over time will basically mold to your foot um, and yeah provide you with that comfort and and um, desire that, that that your foot strike has which is really cool something that definitely is a standout feature for this shoe is the way this it seems to fit to uh, my foot and yeah really really comfortable ride in general moving on to my likes and dislikes so the likes for this shoe is definitely the comfort, exceptional. Um, you can't fault it, there's no hot spots, and the lockdown was perfect. From the runs I've done in it so far, it feels like a shoe that you can sort of run all kinds of paces at. Um, so it's a very versatile marathon racing shoe um, in comparison to say the Nike Vaporfly, which only seems to be um, comfortable at sort of the faster speeds. Whereas the Socony Endorphin Pro, Two, um, it was comfortable at my easy, my steady, my tempo, and I even did a few strides in it. Um, yeah, and it felt exceptional, and the, the comfort is, is there across all range of paces, which is good to know. And another one of my likes was the form fit technology, which I just talked about. And I would confidently be able to recommend this shoe to pretty much anyone who is looking to do their long runs or marathon distance. Um, just because of that technology, I feel like it's gonna work um, very well for a wide range of runners to, um, regardless of sort of your foot strike or your stride length that sort of thing so moving on to my dislikes for this shoe um, unfortunately the grip is exactly the same as the speed so I had the same issue with um, a little bit of slipping in the wet conditions it's not terrible um, and you can get away with it but for me I probably would um, avoid wearing this shoes if I was racing a marathon in the rain. I'd probably go for something more like the, the Adidas shoe which has a, the continental rubber or even the Vaporfly to be honest would be a little bit more grippy than the the uh, Pro 2 here. I don't know why the, the outsole design looks like it should be grippy but yeah from my experience I don't know if it's how I'm striking the ground or um, if debris gets in these sort of grooves and it makes it slick. Oh nearly dropped it. Um, but yeah, the grip definitely is something that, that I would like to see improved in future iterations of this shoe. But yeah, thank you for watching again. Um, and as always, aspire to run and run to inspire. And we'll see you with another vlog soon. Bye-bye.